Dr Jim Chalmers has just handed down the Australian federal budget for 2024-2025. Now, as will come as no surprise, it is very much a pre-election budget, some cash being handed out to various parts of the economy and to various groups. So let's dive in today and have a look at who are the winners, who are the losers, and who has been completely ignored in this year's budget. Let's dive in. So let's first have a look at some of the winners from this year's budget. First and foremost, lower income renters. We've seen those that are receiving rental assistance will be getting about an extra 10% each fortnight. Now to put this in perspective, the average rental payment for this group is about $590 a fortnight and the average rental assistance payment is about 158 to 160. So this is not a huge increase that could make the world of difference for this group who are naturally feeling the rising rental prices right across the country. Number two is the solar panel manufacturers. Uh, we have seen a greater boost from government in terms of funding being provided and incentives. Uh, we've also got the hydrogen production tax incentive. So $2 per kilo of locally produced hydrogen from 2027 going forward part of the Australian made program in really building up Australia as a leader in renewable energy going forward. So I'm sure we will see more and more of that over the next few years as that plays out. Uh, now parents, of course, largely women, superannuation to be paid on paid parental leave. Now part of this is really aimed at addressing the gap in superannuation balances. So could be an important one if you're planning to start a family, we already have a family, considering some time off work to look after the kids, make sure you explore what this could mean for your super balances in the long run. We've also got small businesses and households both getting an energy rebate, $325 for small businesses, $300 for individuals. Great, again, a small bonus, a bit of a payout, certainly may ease some of the cost of living pressures, but not going to be terribly life-changing for the majority of households. Some of the bigger changes, we've got the stage three tax cuts will be introduced and rolled out as expected. So thankfully no more surprises with that one. What that means is that basically everyone earning over about $20,000 a year is going to get a bit of a saving when it comes to their tax bill. For those earning 150 and more, the tax saving will be about four and a half thousand dollars. So again, a welcome bonus for the majority of the Australian population. The other big piece of news is the HEX or HELP debt uh, changed the indexation rate. Now this is the rate that the bill or HEX student loan increases on the 1st of June each year. Now you might recall, I certainly imagine you would if you do have a HEX balance, that on the 1st of June 2023, the HEX balance has increased by 7.1%. Ouch and this year in 2024 expected to increase by 4.7. Now what has been announced in the budget is that this would be changed from either the lower of the wage increase or CPI's inflation rate. Now what this means is that last year will drop from 7.1 to below four and this year from 4.7 to four. So the majority of HEX student loan holders will be getting a bit of a saving, one to $2,000 for the average HEX balance. So again, certainly welcome news. It does still need to be passed. So it is not uh, law not enforced just yet. So watch this space and watch what it could mean for your hex balance going forward. Now, of course, the other group, people with savings in the bank, term deposits, high interest bank accounts, given that this budget is not terribly inflationary, but isn't going to lead to any rate cuts in the short term, is going to mean that interest rates remain higher for longer which is going to mean obviously good news for savers in general. So that's a bit of an overview of some of the winners from this year's budget. As I said, a bit of money being thrown around to different groups, largely aimed at lower income uh, pockets of society. So let's dive in and explore some of the losers from this year's budget. 
First and foremost, in terms of the losers from the budget, first home buyers, absolutely nothing announced in terms of additional incentives or really anything easing or improving the lack of supply in the country. We do have some long-term solutions in terms of encouraging more development, more supply, but the reality is this is really a little bit like mopping the floor while there's a leaking tap. We are really a long way behind from building enough housing to actually solve the crisis. So first home buyers, again, I think that is going to remain quite a challenge. So if you do have kids looking to get into the market, it may be worthwhile speaking with your advisor, speak with your accountant and explore what options you might have to help them getting into the market. Now, next one, of course, higher income renters, very closely linked to the uh, first point in terms of first home buyers, no additional rental assistance for this group, no additional supply. So we do expect the pressure is going to remain on rental markets going forward. So not particularly good news. If you're a renter, conditions expected to remain tight. Now, scammers, anyone trying to avoid or evade tax, yes, it is going to be a challenging time. More and more funding uh, designed and put in place to both prevent, track and stop a lot of the scams that are going on, particularly online. So a number of the organisations will be well funded to combat a lot of what is taking place online at the moment. Now, of course, international students, we did see one uh, slight change or slight nuance announced and that is that a number of universities reliant on international students will only really be able to increase places for them if they increase the housing that is available. So the government doesn't want to put additional strain on housing in an already undersupplied market. So universities are going to have to come up with additional housing solutions if they want to bring in more and more international students. Now, given the reliance of a number of universities right across the country, in fact, a lot of universities, this is going to mean that they are going to need to become quite creative in creating additional housing. And of course, the other losers from the budget, and this could flow into the next session quite nicely, Australian expats. Absolutely nothing on residency in terms of providing clarity on the new residency rules for Australian expats. So again, watch this space, and of course, no rollback or changes to the removal of the main residence exemption. This doesn't come as a terrible surprise for me, or for most expats, but we do live in hope that one day, this main residence exemption will be back on the cards for Australian expats. So let's have a look at some of the aspects that, or areas that might've been completely left out and we were hoping to see, but sadly didn't in this year's budget. Now, in terms of what was left out of the budget that we were hoping to see a bit of clarity on, number one was really around improving the tax deductibility of financial advice. Naturally, I'm a big believer in making advice more and more accessible for more and more Australians right across the globe and improving the tax deductibility of this, particularly in Australia, this would have gone a long way in achieving that. So we're hopeful that we'll see more and more developments on this front going forward. Number two, as I've already mentioned, Australian expats completely left out, no updates on tax residency, no changes to the main residence exemption. Again, we live in hope with that one, but we certainly would like to see a bit of clarity on the residency rules so that expats can appropriately plan ahead particularly for those living in a country that doesn't have a double tax agreement or a tiebreaker test with Australia, and therefore their residency could be impacted. And of course, as I've already mentioned, first home buyers, those looking to get into the market, really nothing uh, to actually improve supply that would have eased pressure or upward pressure on prices going forward. So just a few of the things that we were hoping to see a bit more of in this year's budget, but didn't. As I said, very much a pre-election budget, not a huge amount for our clients to take away from this. We're not expecting a huge impact on equity or bond markets going forward. And as I said, uh, given that interest rates are expected to remain higher for longer, not that we're expecting an increase from today, just that we're not expecting a cut anytime soon. Good news for savers, but it may also mean that if other countries start to cut rates faster than Australia or faster than the RBA, we may see that the Australian dollar actually strengthens going forward. So if you are planning on shifting money back to Australia, now may be the time to seek advice and review your options. 
So there's a bit of an update, bit of a snapshot of this year's budget and what it means for you. Thanks for tuning in.